Welcome, fellow Minecraft techs. Today, we'll be going over some semi-advanced AE2 crafting techniques, specifically focusing on only using power on those crystal growth accelerators when you're actually making those pure crystals and fluix and nether crystals, all those things. When you're making those from seeds, we only want this to power on when those are in progress. Now, this assumes some basic knowledge of AE2 and and being able to get um, a base, basic you know setup going. So this has a drive with a with a, a storage cell. It has the the needed mo mo molecular assembler. It has your crafting. This is like a 4K, I think, um, and your interfaces, and it has everything set up to start right from the beginning. So when I click on down here and I say craft me a flux crystal it's going to spit everything out it's going to turn this on and then when it makes the crystal it's going to put it back in the network and turn this off okay and then that's the same thing with um with the longer time ones so when you tell it to craft one of these pure status quartz it's going to do the same thing it's just going to stay on longer but only until it's done okay before we go into how that part is done, I just want to go over a quick thing with interfaces and chests. These are great. They were great in the old AE. They're still great in the new AE. Now, if you put a chest next to it and you're using your pattern to processing pattern, like you're going to go into a furnace or into a sag mill or something, you can do the same thing with a chest. And that allows you to, oh, some really cool flexibility. So just using this Ender IO item conduit was kind of cool using filters and stuff in these kind of convoluted way to do this but just to show you how these things work so when i say well it's not going to do it because that that's in progress i only have one crafting but if i was to tell this to make me a charged status quartz it's going to drop the regular status quartz in here it's going to pull it from this conduit um, it's going to pull anything that comes into that chest into here and it's filtered so that it's gonna, it says, when you, when you go in here, there's a little item filter in here, a basic one, real easy to make, that we're only going to accept Serdis Quartz. Now, these charges are only input from the sides, um, and, you, and your power is from the bottom or the top. So, and it gets its power through the AE network. Um, so, we're filtered in. It's got the charged quartz. And then now, just for an example, um, when that's done, we've told it to only pull it the charge one. So if you go to extract, it's got a filter for charged. And then input, we also need a filter to say we only want charge to go back into the network because otherwise when it pulls the regular status course, it's just going to go right back in. So a lot of little filters, but it really makes for some nice sleek setups, especially if you have a remote IO or some other kind of like wireless blocks, you could have <clears throat> your entire pattern, um, pattern crafting areas. They could they're, they're really sleek, and you can do it all with these conduits or with those those wireless blocks. So, okay, so we've got all that going. Now, the next thing is we've got an interface next to one of these guys. Okay, these are your sag mills from Endo.io. You can use a grindstone. Well, I don't know if you can use a grindstone because you'd have to manually do it, but you could use a crusher from Mechanism or a pulverizer um, from Thermal Expansion all those would work. You just have to set the inputs. These Ender IO to me seems is just the easiest. Like I can tell it from this one side, push and pull. It's going to grab the Ceratus or the Nether Quartz, and then it's going to grind it down, and then it's just going to throw it right back in. It's just super easy. And then if you have your Dark Steel or, or uh, I think Flint in here, it, it gives you a chance to even get more uh, than just one. Okay, so... It's going to take our quartz, it's going to take them down, it's going to grind them up, it's going to throw them back in the network, and then it's going to, um, okay, I failed at going through a tiny hole. Um, it's going to put them all back in the network, and then it's going to say the next part of the process, which is I have a pattern going to this interface that says I want to make a pure nether quartz crystal. Okay, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to go into that chest. This is separate from the network. This little quartz, flux quartz that I've got here, this is just powering this little setup here that goes import into the formation plane to drop the seeds down. Now, that doesn't have to be on the network. It saves you some channels. It's just easy. 
This doesn't even happen to be on the network, but I don't think they take up channels anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so when, it's, when it pulls these seeds from this chest, this computer up here is waiting for those actual pure crystals to come back in. So when we go to these level emitters and we say, drop a crafting card in here, set it to its default setting of emitter redstone while the item is crafting, and now we have, it's waiting. The network's going to wait until that pure crystal gets sucked up into this item collector, and then it's going to turn off the redstone signal, and that's what's powering these. Um, uh, also, another side note, I have five crystal growth accelerators because this mod pack has random things installed. I think I'm on a uh, mad pack or something, but most mod packs have random things and AE, so this is great. If you don't have this, then you would just use four of these, and you'd need like some kind of uh, annihilation plane or something to just grab the seeds. Um, you can filter these. So if you had an annihilation plane down there, you can see, do the same thing that I'm doing with this from afar uh, with an item filter but, and say, I only want you to grab these things. Otherwise, it's just going to pick the seeds right back up. Um, and you can put these little random item collector thingies right on an interface and it imports it right in. It's really great. Um, I set it up like this just so it was easy to see. There's four items that we need to use these for. Um, one is kind of optional, this one in particular, because these, these create pretty fast. This is just kind of nice to have in here, just to have everything all in one little place. Um, and then your pure Fluix, your pure Nether, and your pure Certus. And so each time you tell this, I want to create one of these, it's going to turn that on. So let's, let's just give it a little test run here again. There you go. And now it's sending this whole, it's powering this whole redstone conduit. You could do it a bunch of different ways. This is just how I ended up doing it. And then it's sending <clears throat> that redstone signal to that toggle bus, <clears throat> which there's an inverted version of this too. So if you have some kind of different setup and you need it to be the opposite of on versus off, then you could throw the inverted one on here. But for our purposes, this will not send power unless this little black uh, box here is getting a redstone signal. So you'll see our seeds in there, they're, they're crafting up, and then once they get all the way, they're going to suck right back up in. Um, and pretty much that's it. I don't think I need to really make the whole setup. Um, if you are confused or would like me to actually do the build, I can. I just thought this was, I know when I, me personally, I don't like to see mod tutorials that go focus on how to craft the items. We have any eye for that now. We don't need to know that. And then how to really make stuff. I just want to know how this stuff is done once it's up. So that was the idea behind this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment, and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.